Tyler Nipper is now 14 years old, battling PTSD after years of bullying. It escalated to him being stabbed with a pencil puncturing his lung. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jacqueline Allen. And I'm Shannon Ogden. And Kyler's journey to take on bullying could soon land in a Colorado federal court. Contact 7 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski introduces us to the teen now fighting back with kindness. Every morning, 14-year-old Kyler Nipper wakes up and looks at his shoes. Well, it all started out in our apartment in Colorado. Rows and rows of shoes, from Uggs to Nikes. Shoes stacked to the ceiling. Yeah, we're, we're going to load them all up right here. But these shoes aren't for Kyler. We accept huge shoes, new shoes, um, any shoes you have in your closet. He's giving them all the way. Oh, we're giving away over 28,000 pairs of shoes. Yeah. What size are you? Yeah, 10 and a half. Yeah. You like them? Yeah. Cool. All the kids in school had Jordans, Adidas, New Balances, Pumas. They're going to kids just like him. I always wanted them. Who couldn't afford the coolest shoes. I'm stopping from what happened to me from what happening to anybody else. What happened to Kyler almost killed him. On October 7th, when I received that phone call, that was one of the hardest moments of my life. I felt like I couldn't get to him quick enough. A bully had just stabbed her son in the chest with a sharp pencil inside this Colorado Springs middle school. I felt like I had failed him as a parent, and all I did was send him to school. At the time, the sixth grader was turning blue. All I knew was that I couldn't breathe. We didn't think Kyler was going to make it. The emergency room doctors didn't think Kyler was going to make it. Kyler walked a little differently than most of the other sixth graders. As a parent, shoes are very expensive to afford. And didn't have the coolest shoes. You know, Walmart was my place to go shop for shoes all the time. Eventually, he had to trade those shoes for these casts to fix a walking disability. I was being bullied in my school and I was eventually stabbed over in my chest over my shoes. But the heart of this story is bigger than cool shoes. This is about accountability. Yeah, I definitely think they could have done more to prevent this. Older attorney Debbie Tossig is representing the family, now taking their fight to federal court. These schools and where Kyler went to school isn't, I think they should be held accountable. They filed a civil rights complaint against the Harrison School District, claiming no one at the school took any action to prevent bullying, despite Kyler's parents repeatedly reporting the bullying to school authorities. What does that say to you? They didn't take Kyler seriously. They didn't take his parents seriously. They didn't follow through um, and take any action. Kyler's stabbing came after he endured more than a year of physical and verbal abuse. But he had kids kicking him and pushing him over even when he was wearing his cast. At the time of the attack, Carmel Middle School was more than 50% Hispanic. They say much of the bullying was racially motivated, with Kyler being called names like white trash and chicken nugget. They also claim Kyler was bullied because of his disability, the way he walked and condition of his shoes. I think that's why it was picked on. And I think that kids knew they could get away with that, you know, because the school sort of took a back seat and didn't really intervene or do anything. In the two months leading up to the stabbing, records show Kyler's parents called the school 15 times to report the bullying, only making matters worse. After Kyler was attacked, the school failed to call police or send help. We drove him to the hospital from the school. The school never called an ambulance. The pencil went through Kyler's chest and punctured his right lung requiring emergency surgery and a breathing tube for three days. These are eight. Better. Fast forward to now. Better. Yeah. And while Kyler's physical wounds have healed, he's still grappling with PTSD. He wakes up about every two hours all night long, whimpering, crying, flashbacks. Um, still to this day, three years later. You like him? But with each shoe he gives out. All right, cool. So that's your size. I'll keep him this size for you. He's like Popeye. It's his spinach. Kyler's mom says he is slowly healing. Recently, we just figured out that all you have to do is give away shoes. His family recently moved to Nevada, where their nonprofit, Kyler's Kicks, is taking off. We lost a piece of Kyler the day that he was stabbed, but he grew into something more beautiful. While the Nipper family is choosing kindness over hate, what they don't want lost is the need for schools to take bullying seriously before it's too late. Oh, Kyler's definitely making the world a better place. I'm Contact 7 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski. Impressive what Kyler's turned that into. Now, the case is set for trial in April here in Denver Federal Court. His family's seeking money to pay for overwhelming medical bills that force them into homelessness. They also want to change how the district handles bullying. The Harrison School District had no comment on the lawsuit.